Anyways, final topic for the show. Yeah. Is traditional game journalism dead? Now, I bring this up because I think this is a very interesting group of people to talk about. Sure. This. Yeah. We got us. X. We, we left IGN to, to essentially, we left traditional games journalism to do fucking this crazy weird internet video thing. Then you left IGN to do a different form of games mm-hmm. journalism. Yep. Uh, uh, so I think, yes, traditional games journalism is dead, as in the journalism that we grew up with in like the 90s and 2000s yep. is gone. Because the purpose of that, of the magazines I used to buy and the early websites that I used to read, the purpose of those was to tell me stuff about games, to give me information, give me screenshots, give me like, you know, this game's coming out. What do feel like? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, now people can get that information however they want. Like they can get it from PS Blog, they can get it from YouTube, they can get it wherever. Like being the gatekeepers to information is no longer a viable thing. So that version of the games press is gone. But I think what's come up in its place is much more interesting and varied. Like people still have this thing where they think of the whole of the games media as journalism. About 20% of it is journalism. The rest is entertainment, criticism, all this other really interesting stuff that we do now. And you know, my job, about half of my job is reporting. And then the rest of it is criticism and entertainment. And you know what? What a lot of people do on YouTube is essentially games entertainment. It's like a TV show about games. Yep. And uh, that's fine. That can coexist. And there's this weird perception that like, oh, the games media is dying, and it's not. It's just diversifying, and it's become a bigger thing. Like games journalism is now only a part of the games media, which is mm-hmm. a much bigger thing. Um, but I think it's a really interesting time to be involved in talking about games. I've been doing this for ten years. I started off on a magazine when I was seventeen years old, and I wrote. I remember the first thing I was asked to do, I won't name the magazine, I was asked to write a preview of Okami, and I was like, I haven't played Okami, I've never even seen it. And they were like, just go look at it on GameSpot and then write it from that. <laughs> that was genuinely, genuinely what we had to do on that magazine. And uh, that that was, you know, that's what print was at. That's the stage yeah. that print was yeah. at at that yeah. point, you know. And I, I left print after a year because although I liked having like a magazine in my hands that I'd written because that was exciting, uh, I just realized that, you know, most of the companies who had you know, print magazines, they weren't looking at the internet. And meanwhile, I'd grown up internet. Yeah, mm-hmm. I had my own website when I was a teenager, you know, and I read a lot of IGN and Eurogamer and a bunch Fire. of other stuff. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I went into online after that. And I did, you know, I worked with Eurogamer and a bunch of other websites for a long time before I joined IGN and now at Kotaku. And even in that time, like it just changes every year. Every mm-hmm. year it yeah. changes. And like at IGN, it was very much like a combination of, you know, I don't want to say marketing, but like publisher driven, here's the thing we want you to show your audience stuff and then entertainment and then like criticism and reviews and at right. Kotaku um, it's different again like a lot of what we do is post release so it's like uh, and I do a lot more reporting I do a lot more investigating of things because we don't do previews at all and uh, again like a lot of sites now don't do previews for instance it's becoming old fashioned and a lot of people aren't doing scored reviews anymore you know one by one so I don't think IGN will ever give up scores and I don't think they necessarily should but a lot of other sites have been given up scores for years so again like if I were to say is the games journalism that I, st- that I started doing when I was 17 dead pretty much mm-hmm. yeah or it's on the way but the thing I'm doing now is, is a different thing. And it's, I think it's more interesting. And it's in the same wheelhouse. That's the thing is, yeah, mm-hmm. everything's just evolving and changing. It's what I've been saying to people for years. So, you know, I remember four packs ago, there was a panel that was basically like, independent game site, can, how, can you compete with IGN, mm-hmm. GameSpot? And, you know, and the answer, and I, I, was, I read it and I went to the panel and I was like, the answer is no. Yeah. You, you shouldn't try to. You should do something different. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You should be driving people to you in a different way. And that's why previews are falling off and scores are falling off because... Do you want to be one of the three dozen sites that are like, this game's a 9.5? I don't know. Like, figure out a better way to talk about games in the way people want to hear you talk about games. Yeah, right? yeah like, entirely. I don't need to score something for you to know if we like no, it. Don't hate, like. Everyone knows I hate scores, too. And, I, and like, the... Like, I, I agree with what Keza was saying. Like, uh, the, people conflate games media with games journalism. Mm-hmm. I think that what Keza does is journalism. I think that a lot of what I did, but not all of what I did, was journalism. You know, for all the people that call us... Or called us journalists in quotes. It's like go yeah. read, go read my fifty thousand word history of Naughty Dog and tell me yeah, that's yeah, not journalism. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like there are things that like we're doing that is yeah. journalism, but we do have to separate um, what is a real journalist that does the White House beat for oh, Washington totally, Post yeah. doing compared to like us talk, playing mm-hmm. uh, and talking about video games. They're very different. You yeah. know, um, I think it works the other way too, where I feel like a lot of people refer to me as a games journalist. And I'm like, no, 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 no. At no point was I ever that. I am a game entertainer. But like it, you're yeah. saying that. It's like, this, that's this what is it. I am. Like, I mean, and, and sometimes, like you say, like, one, of the, one of the Twitter insults or comments insults, you go, call this journalism. And it's like, well, no, no, it's, it's not. No. This, is, this, name, this particular thing isn't journalism. Yeah. Like yeah. now and then I'll do the thing that's like, yeah, that's journalism. Like, I mean, every site I've ever worked for has had, 
you know, um, a bunch of people who hate it. I think every big site has a bunch of people who hate it. Mm. And what the, the criticism we always used to get at IGM is, eh, it's not journalism. And it's like, well, does it have to be? Yeah. Really? Because yeah, yeah, yeah. that's very limiting, actually. If the only thing you're allowed to do is journalism, you're not allowed to do any opinion and you're not allowed to do any entertainment and you're not allowed to do any criticism. It's just mm. like, come on, there's loads of more interesting it's one things of those, It's one of those words people throw around and I think they understand the weight of the word journalism or yeah. what it truly means. You know what I mean? When I got my degree in journalism from the University of Missouri mm. and came to IGN after working in a daily newspaper where I was like, we were super ethically driven everything I'm writing is super just one. this side said this and this side this said that and it's not about what I think either side means you know what I mean totally. to get there on day one write my first review and turn to Rob and be like hey I wrote this review you want to read and he's like no nah, just publish it <laughs> and I was like what excuse me <laughs> oh my god the internet and he's like, is just, great just, just, just publish it and I'm like don't you want to proof it he's like have you looked it over I'm like yeah he's like it's fine then and I was like Okay. Yeah. Like, what? Oh, man, you early internet I mean? was so like yeah, that. Exactly. Like there weren't any editors. I mean, actually, I think one of the greatest tragedies of the loss of print media is the loss of sub editors. Like those people that used to just their whole job was to craft things and make them like look good on the page and fix all your grammar yeah. and make it consistent with everything else that was on the website. Mm. Like, we've lost sub editors basically, and it's a it's, it's a shame. It's, it's it's a loss of a craft that I think was important to yeah. to, to writing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got away from calling our journalists a long or really early on. Yeah. You know, I mean that's what I was talking about in the story I said when I was working in the daily newspaper is you know going to cover this congressman's got meeting and it was a boiling hot Missouri day and I got there and I'd walk there like an idiot and I was sweating like a moron and I drank <laughs> this bottle of water and I put it down empty and I went, oh my god, I'm I just. I just totally sacrificed my ethics. I drank the water they paid for. I went to his aid and I was trying to pay her for the bottle of water I Why? drank. And she's like, get the fuck out of here. Like, I don't know what you're talking about. It's not a big deal. And I, I had to sacrificed go and, my ethics. I had to go tell my ex ed wow. editor. He's like, it's not a big deal. Don't worry. Blah, blah. And then you get to IGN and games journalism in quotes at the time where it's like, oh, and here's this all expense four day trip to go yeah. see two games. They'll, like, you'll see, you're going to be gone for like... 72 hours and you're going to see two games for 15 minutes apiece yeah. and then the rest is just drinking with your friends and partying at this pool you're like what the fuck is happening but that's entertaining like, ent I mean the thing is that doesn't happen so much now as yeah, it, no, it, no, it, it's, it's a different world yeah, it's I mean, apart world from world anything world. else nobody's got the money yeah. to do it like we don't I mean, in the early 2000s like when I started out in mid 2000s like the people just had all this money like Vivendi yeah. would just have all this fucking money and they'd Sierra. just be like hey just take people to Miami for a week to show them three games and it was just ridiculous yeah. but the thing is it's still like that in, in like lifestyle and entertainment journalism which isn't again really isn't, isn't, isn't journalism, journalism in the same way as what, what we do. do call it. But you know, I remember reading a, a re <laughs> I remember reading a thing a friend of mine who works in entertainment journalism wrote that was a review of Virgin's Virgin Flights' entertainment system, and then at the bottom it was like, "Thanks to Virgin for the three day trip to a Jamaican spa." Yeah, you know? and it was like, yeah. I mean, that stuff still happens, and it's like that nobody has a go at somebody writing for a lifestyle or entertainment website for going on a trip or for all this stuff because no one expects journalism from them. Yeah. And I think it, there's a weird thing in games where people expect everything to be journalism all the time, and it's like, where did this come from? Because it mm -hmm. never even was like that. Like, when I was reading magazines growing up, like, very little of that was journalism. Most of it was just messing around. Yeah. <laughs> and so I think it's always just the fear, right? Like, and it's the, again, I think the games industry is so young that, you know, we're still learning all this as we go and still seeing it develop and all these different things. And it comes down to basically people being afraid of, oh, IGN got paid off to give that a 10 and I'm that, not going to Which never happens, bucks. incidentally. Oh, yeah. Literally in 10 years, I've never heard of that happening yeah, in that's, the specialist press. That's the really frustrating thing is like for all the conspiracy theories that are out there, yeah. like I don't even know what anyone's talking about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, like like maybe those things have happened in other places at other yeah. times. I have no idea. All but, I know is that my experience with my outlet that I worked at and like the people surrounding yeah. me, everything was on the up and up. I like, work, like, I work for pretty much every British games outlet now never once mm. and like interestingly the uh um yeah the conspiracy theory things become worse lately because there's this concept of internet truth which is that something just becomes received wisdom on whatever forum or twitter or whatever it just becomes received wisdom and there's no at no point has anybody ever proven it yeah and then well, those same people are like, you're you're not doing journalism, so you're not even doing thinking correctly. <laughs> they're, 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 you're not doing evidence-based thinking. Yeah, I mean that was the funny thing to me was that like there are even a f like I've seen a few posts and a few tweets being like, uh, you know, game journalism is getting cleaned up, and one of them is that they fired IGN fired Colin Moriarty and Greg Miller <laughs> well, or whatever. And brilliant. I'm like, really? Because I'm pretty sure we quit uh, three months before we left, yeah. and there were all you know there were attempts to keep us there and all these it's kinds just, of things. It's just like, but like you're right, like once it's once it's out there, it's out there, and it Internet is what truth, it is. Yeah. yeah, no, exactly. Yeah. But I do sympathize with why, what some people say about games. Let's call it games writing, right? Mm -hmm. I do sympathize. I think a lot of like I don't. I think some games writing is complete trash. I think that a lot of it is click driven and not. And that's something that I really never cared about personally. 
I got traffic because I wrote about the things I cared about and I was passionate about those subject matter. Yeah. That subject matter. Not everybody's that lucky. No, you know? I, I I know that, mm. but but you know I understand why people are mad about clicking on a story about rehashing the same thing over and over again or just let not letting well, those a certain horrible subject horrible headlines, go. you know, because there are some. Um, you know, part of the reason for this, and I think the biggest problem that games media has is that everybody who gets good goes away because the money's poor usually. Um, unless you're really lucky, the money's poor in games journalism. Um, the career prospects are low. Like once you get to, you know, you, you, senior you, editor. You hit the ceiling. Yeah, like, well, I mean, where do I go from here? Yeah, um, you know, I don't know what I'm doing in ten years. Like, am I still going to be editing a website? Yeah. I don't know. Um, and all these reasons, and you know, there's, there's little respect associated with the profession outside of the gaming world. And for all these reasons, like people get to thirty, they get really good, and then they go and they just hire like wave after wave of young people yep. who don't necessarily know how to do good reporting, and they've got no one training them. And meanwhile, a lot of media organizations aren't investing properly in training their staff. So that's why you get a lot of rubbishy headlines and that's why you get a lot of really just bad reporting because nobody's trained young people to do it. You see the same mistakes over and over. Yeah, and it's kind of frustrating because I think that, you know, if you want to fix games journalism, then show me the money. Put some money into it, train people, give people who are, you know, 30 plus and who've been doing this for a long time good incentive to stick around and you're going to have a better quality of journalism. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of the outlets that do value their writers consequently have a better level of writing. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I totally agree with that just in the sense that there is a lot of churn which creates, an, ironically, a lot of journalism, mm-hmm. which then, you know, like, it is important to compartmentalize what the different kinds of things people are doing out there and the different kinds of writing that are out there. For instance, you're one of the, like, and I've said it, when, when you left IGN, I was like, I can't believe that, like, we're losing Keza because Keza's, like, one of the great writers in, ga- in games, and you are, you know? Thank and you, I actually, <laughs> And I think that, you know, one of your colleagues in the States, Jason Schreier, is another one of these guys that writes real journalism. He is you know? such a good reporter. And, like, like and, and I have a lot of respect for him. Guys like Matt Leone over at Polygon write real journalism. If you want that kind of stuff and I feel like I used to write that kind of stuff too and I still do I, I like more editorializing now so I'm not like researching anymore but mm. you have to if you want that kind of stuff support that kind of stuff but understand that things are kind of changing and that there's always going to be a place for that kind of great writing and that essential kind of writing but people are going over to YouTube and people are moving over to Twitch and finding the people that they trust in games criticism which must be compartmentalized from yeah. games journalism which is why I think games criticism is kind of falling Yeah. and I think that games journalism is kind of plateaued where it's like there are good people out there doing good work and I support them and, and the stories behind the games are the best uh, it's the best you know yeah. so you have to if you want to see more of it make sure to support the people that are doing it right right now because mm-hmm. you'll see more of it if you do and then there's also another thing I sympathize with when people because so someone um, criticizing Kotaku with you know on Twitter with me recently was like oh you just put up there's a lot of like really valueless stuff that you put up and it's just like just to fund people like Jason and, and you and Patrick Peck and whoever else they picked who were good and it's like well yeah that's kind of how online media works <laughs> uh, there's always going to be stuff on the site that's not the best mm-hmm. uh, or there's always going to be something that's um, no, even if it's not a mistake if it's just like a low value like oh here's a video that's cool you know or oh here's a picture someone's done there's always going to be three line stories because unfortunately that's kind of the way the online media works now like you need the the volume you can't make every single thing you put up on the internet take you three days of research because you just it's just just not viable as a business Mm. so when you read a site like i mean buzzfeed is another example you know a lot of just like quite valueless trash that might make you smile but you know and then a lot of interesting investigative journalism that took a long time. You know, that's that's kind of how the, the ratio works. Mm. I think a lot of people criticize, you know, whether it's IGN or Kotaku or anyone, there's there's a lot of criticism like, oh, but so much of what you do, like, you haven't put much effort into, and it seems like... You know, it's, it's, it's a top ten list. Or yeah, it's, oh, it's a list. It's like, well, that's what you have to... Well, that's why we get to do good things. It's because these things go up and they're less effort and they yeah. do good business. Mm. And that's... And you just got to be... It's, it's business-minded about it, Th- you know? And that's the piece of the puzzle that always bothered me the most, mm. is that... People be like, I hate. We go into the comments of a story and be like, I hate this kind of writing. I'm like, but you are clicking on it, and that is, <laughs> and that, and that is sending the metric the, yeah. message that you mm-hmm. like it. If you don't, that's another thing. If you don't want to see the stuff you don't want to see, do not consume it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because then the numbers will plummet, and you'll get more of something else. You well, know, and, uh, and, and, and one of the things I like about working at Kotaku is I think the ratio is pretty good. Like almost everything I work on, I get to spend time on, and I really enjoy. And interestingly, the stuff that is best for us, at least on my. UK bit of the site, the stuff that does best for us is usually the stuff that took a lot of effort. So it makes sense and it's and it, it's great because that gives you the opportunity to spend time on interesting features and not necessarily, you know, thankfully we're big enough that we don't have to shit out 20 shit stories a day. Like if you're a small site and you just have to get volume and you're yeah. just trying to get on Gaff and M4G and stuff and you're just, yeah. these poor young guys are just shitting out 20 rubbish stories a day, you know? 
we don't have to do that where yeah. I am. And I feel very lucky not to have to do that. But yeah, unfortunately, that is kind of the model for online journalism mm. because of the way that the advertising model works. And this is why I think that the online advertising model, this is very boring. I won't go on about it, but I think it's, <laughs> it's definitely going down the toilet. Like the way that ads work, like based on volume, yeah. like, oh, there's X thousand people, X million people read this. Therefore, the, uh, the, ad, the ad is worth this much. I sure, think that's, sure, that's sure. definitely dying. It's like, all changing. Yeah. The entire thing is changing. And it's changing thanks to you guys for supporting <laughs> us in places like patreon.com slash kind of funny games. This is thank amazing, so by the way. Much. I think what you've it done is. is fantastic. Thank you. Thank you very it's much. It's really great. Very I very, much. In, very much enjoyed what you've been doing. Yeah. I think it's thank you. We appreciate that. That means a lot from you. <laughs> this has been the first ever and last ever episode 10 of the kind of funny games cast. Thank you so much, Kaza, for joining us. No worries. Thank it's you been so a much to the people on Twitch watching us live. That, that was super cool of you. Your chat was great, I'm sure. I didn't see it, though. We're not allowed to. Yeah. Kevin won't allow it. Kevin, Kevin's being kind of a a mean guy right now. Anyways, thank you so much. We'll see you next week. I love you. Bye. Bye-bye.